Welcome inside Gillette Stadium, everybody. My name is Mike Petralia, joined as always by Patriots expert columnist for WEEI.com, Christopher Price. All right, Chris, every year it seems like we talk about the Patriots going to Buffalo. This year, it is the road opener for the New England Patriots. Uh, as Ryan Hannibal pointed out on WEEI.com, Patriots are a stunning 8-7 and seven in road openers under Bill Belichick. I didn't think it was that bad, but every year we talk about the Patriots going to Buffalo and how difficult the crowd noise will be. I don't think this year will be any different. As a matter of fact, as you pointed out earlier in the week, it could be even more difficult this year. Rex Ryan has got him stoked up. He really does. It's not just the players, but the entire fan base has clearly worked into a lather. And you know what? feel pretty good about themselves. They won their regular season opener against the AFC finalists. They can beat their chest and say, you know, we've arrived. We are players. We're true players in the AFC picture. I don't know how much of that is going to be the case, you know, come the fourth quarter this Sunday. But at the same time, it's never easy going up to Buffalo and winning in September up there. The Patriots have stumbled a couple of times. I, I think this is going to be an equally difficult game for them. I think going on the road regardless, early in the year, we've talked about this before, yeah. you don't really know what kind of team you have until you get between those white lines. So I think you feel good about where you are if you're the Patriots after week one, but there's still things that you're seeing on film you need to tighten up before you go into upstate New York. All right, after Tom Brady was asked about his Donald Trump red hat, as so many people have made so much of a big story of this summer, uh, Donald Trump giving him a hat, make America great again. He joked that, you know, he'd love to see a White House uh, putting green on the lawn as he and Donald Trump are very good golfing buddies. After we got uh, past all of that frivolity uh, in the locker room, Tom Brady was asked about how to deal with the crowd noise. And he really said what I found what he said was interesting is that we have to execute. If we execute and have clean, solid plays early in the game, much like we talked about in the podcast, then the crowd isn't so much a big a factor. But if you mess up, if you screw up, if you start to have to take timeouts, even in the first half, the crowd can become a very disruptive factor uh, in terms of running an offense. We've seen it before up there. You know, it, it's a snowball effect. In you, you start to get a big play from Buffalo, whether it's a fumble, special teams play, whatever. The crowd gets louder. They get more momentum. They get more rhythm. It's always imperative to get a clean start, to get a good start early both on uh, offense and defense special teams as well. But at the same time, it's even more imperative this week, given the level of energy that they're going to be expecting for that one. All right, the Patriots get a player back this week in LeGarrette Blunt. He uh, was sitting out uh, week one, the win over the Steelers because of the NFL substance abuse policy violation with Le'Veon Bell from 2014. The Bills had one of those players in that category in week one, and he was a big one, Marcel Darius. The Bills' defense looked good without Darius. They expect to get the big nose tackle who just got a six-year, $95.1 million extension back in the lineup with this week. What kind of disruption does he provide? That is going to be a winnable matchup if you're Buffalo. That pressure up the middle. You're looking for guys like Williams. You're looking for guys like Darius to put the heat on Ryan Wendell, David uh, David Andrews, uh, the, the two rookie guards. Whatever combination New England wants to roll out there, if you're Buffalo, that's your opportunity to win that matchup, to be able to get that pressure up the middle. Brady doesn't like pressure. Obviously, we all know that, but, but he's struggled at times with pressure right up the gut, whether it's a blitz uh, in, in the form of something coming up the A-gap or just those big guys up front moving the pocket, pushing the pocket, trying to get after him. It's going to be a struggle for those guys. I wouldn't be surprised, and this is something we also discussed in the podcast, the point of emphasis this week, if you're Tom Brady in the pass game, get the ball out as fast as possible. Tempo, 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 rhythm, rhythm, rhythm. He averaged less than two seconds from snap to throw against the Steelers. I'd look for the same thing this week against Buffalo. The other thing I'd look for, Chris, is don't believe the pre-snap read maybe five seconds beforehand. Brady has been told by Belichick time and time again with Rex Ryan he loves to even, you know, and he made reference to this, Belichick did earlier in the week, line a defensive lineman up at safety position mm -hmm. five seconds before a defensive line, uh, before a snap goes off, and that is to give a quarterback uh, the uncertainty of not knowing what's coming, a stunt, a blitz, or what have you. The wins and losses. It's interesting looking at Rex going up against Tom Brady. The wins and losses are very clear. Ever since Rex became a defensive coordinator in Baltimore, Brady has won more often than not. He's won 66% of the games, but at the same time, if you look at the per game averages they are noticeably lower 
against a Rex Ryan defense than they are against the rest of the league. Right. He's always had the personnel. He's always been very fortunate to have some great personnel, defensive personnel, whether it's been in Baltimore, whether it's been in New York, and now with Buffalo. But it, at the end of the day, it, it does. He presents a real challenge to Tom Brady. Talking about the individual game. Talking about Ryan going up against Tom Brady. Not the rest of the guys in the field. That's going to be the chess match this week that's obviously going to be the one worth watching. Okay, I think Deion Lewis is going to have, for that reason, a big, big factor again in this game. I think they're going to look, uh, Tom Brady is going to look to dump that ball out. He's going to, I asked Brady in the locker room today on Wednesday, how do you take advantage of an overly aggressive Rex Ryan Buffalo Bills defense? And he said, yeah, sometimes you do have to get rid of the ball quickly, and that to me, means Deion Lewis again. I, I think you're right. I think, like we said before, it's going to be rhythm, it's going to be tempo, it's going to be uh, getting the ball out as fast as possible to short and intermediate routes. Gronkowski, Edelman, Deion Lewis. The other thing, and this is something we've talked about before, wouldn't be surprised to see the Patriots try and use some of that aggression against them, like they did against the old Pittsburgh teams, whether it's play action, whether it's misdirection, play fakes, that sort of stuff. That's another way to use uh, ag aggression against a defense and get them back on their heels. Okay, on the other side of the ball, we've spent so much time talking about Bills, Rex Ryan defense against Tom Brady. What about Belichick against Tyrod Taylor? Belichick in his conference call with us on Tuesday pointed out Tyrod Taylor is no rookie. Mm -hmm. He is a guy who spent several years in the Baltimore Ravens um, system, organization, obviously has studied the Patriots' uh, defense uh, at depth, at nauseam, knows kind of Belichick's tendencies, if, if that is possible. Certainly Tyrod Taylor in those meetings. What kind of impact and what kind of approach do the Patriots take against Taylor? I think it's going to be a combination of things. I think it's not just the fact that he, you know, that Taylor knows the Patriots pretty well from his time in Baltimore and the fact that they knocked heads on several occasions when Taylor was working as a backup quarterback. I think really a lot of the best aspects of Tyrod Taylor's game, at least the ones we saw in the opener, kind of reminds you a little bit of Colin Kaepernick. That's not completely coincidental because Greg Roman, the Bills offensive coordinator, used to be the offensive coordinator in San Francisco when Kaepernick was out there. An ability to run, a willingness to run, some design plays, also being able to take off and tuck it when, when the play started to break down. But the other thing, too, taking some deep 